Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh review. And you know what? It's been a long time since I've built a model kit. Let's do that. Tonight, we're going to take a look at the Bandai Star Wars model kit R4i9. <laughs> I had to double check myself if I read that right, and it's just numbers and letters. Now, I actually did get the R2-D2 rocket booster version with all the extra stuff and the little tools and blah, blah, blah. But I haven't put it together because... <sighs> It's R2. I've built a couple of R2s, and in my brain I think, oh, I don't really want to build another R2. But this being a different type of astromech with the new head, different color and such, it feels like a new build. So I want to get this on the shelf. And on the front you get this cool picture. Boy, it's just glossy and all the lights all over it. You get a nice picture of the model. You get a background with some stormtroopers, officer. This does come with the drink accessory for R2-D2. I'm hoping that just fits on the older model and I don't have to build that other one yet. On the side, I'm not sure if that's from the movie or it's some steel from somewhere or that's the actual model, but all these, these are the model. On the other side, the nice glamour shots of the droid is showing the next two droids in the series, R2-Q5 and R5-J2. Again, we're just building the same figure again. Different colors, it makes me think different characters. On the back, nothing but a big field of glossy black. Getting it open, we see the usual stuff. It's your standard sprues in a bag. It looks like uh, droid parts, droid parts. Oh, it does come with the regular R2 dome, I guess because of the reuse of some of the parts. Well, most of the parts except for the head. I wonder if there seems to be the dome covers here. I wonder if there is enough to build the whole head here and you can switch heads and make kind of a black and silver R2 unit. It's smaller, it's the base, it's the decals, and it looks like, yeah, it kind of looks like uh, they don't include any water slides unless it's just back to back with that one no it's just decals no water slides i wonder if that's a thing i wonder why they went that way with it but the other bag you get the new head you get some clear parts here's r2s oh those are the cups that go on the cup holder for r2 everything looks to be in the same color except for some of the silver part what i noticed already too on the front you get the silver right here they put that part right there in the black gunmetal color so is it, yeah it looks like decals right there yep decal 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 all the black and all the silver seems to be stickers but as usual i'm going to start building this but i'm not going to film the whole thing if i run into any snags or difficult parts or something that confuzzles me, which it usually does, which is usually me skipping ahead in the instructions or missing a part and then having to go back, take it apart, put it back together. I will film stuff like that, but for the most part, get through this and then we'll take a look at the final figure. Now, if you've put together the R2-D2 model kit, you know how many parts are in that head. In fact, I just did it just now, we'll get to that. The R4 unit, it's essentially one, two, three, four, five, five pieces, not counting this or this. The thing about it, there were still R2 parts in the sprues like because of the shared sprues here. So thankfully, I went to the R2 with rooster, the rooster bucket, the R2 with booster rocket version, which I just showed a minute ago, and the parts line up the same numbers and everything as that kit. So I was able to put together all the parts for the R2 head that come with the R4 model kit. The problem is it still shares parts between the two heads, the eye part and the surrounding area. For right here, it goes into the R4 unit. There's not two of each of those. And then this part right here. So if you do want to do a gunmetal and gray R2 unit out of this kit, you'll have to take these parts off the R4 unit. You can't have both at the same time. But I'll be damned if I don't want to get another one of these now and build one of these in this color. Good thing Bluefin are bringing these in now so I don't have to pay import prices for a model kit. Going together fairly quickly, but <laughs> if you've put the Star Wars kits together, you've put together R2 maybe once, maybe twice, maybe a couple times. I just love the color separations between the different parts, the silver, the gun metal. But if you don't have a pair of tweezers, go get a pair of these before you go putting this kind of thing together. It's just so much easier to put little parts like this in holes. I remember way, way back with the first R2 kit, I didn't have the proper tools and it was, oh, it was kind of good. I'm also finding this color really harsh on cutting it out of the sprues. I, I have the tool and maybe I need a more expensive one or a better one, or maybe this one's just old. I've used it a lot. I remember on the Darth Vader kit, I didn't have these. I used tweezers. Ooh, don't, don't do that. But even with these, I'm making kind of marks right here, but you know what? 
my model kits go with toys and toys have seam lines toys have uh, just random plastic sticking off of it so this doesn't bother me as much as other model builders where they're like making tiny prop replicas of the droids on the latter parts silver parts it's not nearly as noticeable and then on a stormtrooper you snip it it's almost invisible although on some of these they could have put the gate under the part or something where it was less noticeable. They've done that in several parts, like here, the original R2 parts, the part holding it in the sprue comes in and then down. So when you snip it, it's not on an out facing edge or anything. But here they just put big old stuff on there and it's kind of hard to get off. But a pair of side cutters makes, but a pair of side cutters makes everything so much easier. And that's me saying this as a very, very, very amateur model builder. I'm just after Star Wars figures. That's why I got into this. And I, I know I get some comments from professional model builders or guys that have been doing it for 40 years going, you should do the water slides. You could, you know, sand that, cut that. And I'm just like, I just want a droid, man, to go with all my other toys. There's nothing wrong with either approach to it. Just do your own thing, man. But damn, this comes out a beautiful looking toy. And if you haven't noticed, these Mezco stands are multi-useful. Multi-useful? Is that even that? Yeah, we'll go with it. Another place the tweezers come in handy are the decals or decals, whatever you want to call them. I went ahead and put the silver stickers on this part before I stuck it in there because I wanted it to be under the top layer, you know what I mean? And it almost seems like these are thinner than what I'm used to, the older kits. Usually the stickers are pretty thick, you put them on there, there's a raised edge, but when I put these on, it almost, where I touched it, it started to adhere. It just kind of fell into place. Now, one thing I don't like about that is if you miss, you're peeling it back up. And because of the thinness, I feel like I'm going to tear it. But I really didn't have a problem at all. Once I got it lined up, I, I pushed it down in places. And when I stuck the part in, it looks like silver under... It. <laughs> actually looks pretty good. It even formed to the dents where the sculpt goes in and then comes back out. It, it went in fairly nicely for a decal. I don't know when we get to the rest of the kit, which it wants me to do like little itty bitty ones all over the place. We'll see how that goes. But before I started with the decals, I painted these silver. I, they're just too small. And when they go in there, they want you to put a decal on each one, but hopefully I won't knock all that paint off when I put it, you know, just throw it at the back of this body. Stuck through it. Yeah, yeah not bad. Okay. Okay, I can live with that. Okay, after getting enamored with what I think is, I, I'm 99% sure they're new style decals. They did so great right here. And when I went up here on the black parts of the head, they go so nicely. You just get them in place and then they just lay down. You push them and they're, they're not seamless. They're not as nice as water slides, but these are fairly thin and a little bit harder to tell that they are just stickers. Hell, this silver line running across right here I know it's not the straightest in the world. I'm old, give me a break. But it went on fairly nicely. There's a little gray stripe right here. But I do notice the smaller the decal, I can't get them to stick. Maybe I'm doing something wrong, but there is a static element to it that helps the larger ones lay down. But with the smaller ones, they just jump all over the place. Even when I get them into position, they won't stay on. So the small little parts, I ended up painting a little bit coming in here, doing the corners. I don't know if I'll do that for, with the front because <laughs> I put it in before I realized that those weren't gonna stick. Also on the instructions, it shows the silver stripe running right here and around the leg. Uh, there's no decal for that, That's, I don't know. Also up here above the silver part, you can see that it is black too. There's no decal for that. And up here, they make sure to show a top view of the droid with this one black section right there. There's no decal for that either. And I gotta think they originally planned that because why put that shot there in the first place? So somebody in the sticker department got out of it. He was like, hey, it's almost quitting time. Let's get out of here. And he was like, okay, I, I'm calling this good. And he missed some decals or stickers on the sheet or in the overall process because there's not even room for those on the sheet. Before we get into the actual review, I just wanted to show this with the dome. I pried the eye out of the R4 head, but unfortunately, I broke uh, the little projector, whatever this piece is, while trying to get it out of this head. So I glued this in, and I think this looks pretty good. I don't know if this is an actual color scheme in a movie or book or comic or whatever, but it makes for a nice looking R2 unit. Like I said, I'm a fan of gunmetal, I'm a fan of silver, and these two colors together works pretty well. Let's 
put that head back on, see where that goes. And it's not just the eyepiece, it's not just the projector piece you have to switch out, you also have to take this piece off to connect it to the body, which is also this gunmetal piece in between. And those connectors do have a pop to it, so you gotta kinda pry in there, get it unstuck all the way around, and then pops it off. Okay, coming back in later, just a little bit, after I realized something, the projector I keep talking about shared between the two heads that there's not a double of, so you can't make two heads, actually goes up here. The projector up here is actually included in the sprue, just like this one back here. This is just a one-piece piece, one-piece piece, and this up here is a two-part piece. And after slowing down, looking at it, putting stuff on the shelves, I realize I talk about the only shared parts being the eye, the projector, and the base of the head here. In reality, the whole body shared. So it's not like you can buy one of these sets and end up with two droids. You just get the option of making an R2 or an R4, either or. I just wanted to clarify and kind of sound like I know what the hell I'm talking about, which is not always. Put this in here. You can hear it pop together. There it goes. Like I said, I'll probably get another one of these sets to make the R2 unit, but I'm gonna wait for domestic distribution. Bluefin through Amazon or Big Bad Toy Store or somewhere. And there we are back to all the R4 goodness. And it's no secret I love the model kits. There is just nothing better droid-wise than model kits. Well, okay, I kind of drift, for protocol droids, I kind of drift towards figure arts. And the figure arts R2 is not bad at all. But man, if Bandai keeps giving us different versions of Astromechs in the model kit line, I'll keep buying them. Everything about them is just so crisp. The details, because everything is a separate part, so everything is its own entity on the figure itself. Sometimes with action figures, they take the details it's all in the same sculpt so it gets kind of muddy here and there don't get me wrong figure arts beautiful but here you can see the lines in between different parts and pieces the separation of colors is beautiful there's no paint to worry about this part is a different color than this part and then you put it together it's two separate colors i will say this is a dust magnet from hell though i don't know if it's because of the glossiness or what but dust just but saying all that about paint these are model kits they're meant to be painted so if you want some wash to it or some dirtiness some wear some tear you got to do that yourself but overall yeah now if this is going to be your first model kit or you're thinking about getting your first model kit just know that it doesn't have toy weight it has model weight and that's to say it's hollow inside you put all these light plastic pieces together they hold together well without glue but it's not as heavy as a solid action figure and that'll kind of throw you off at first you'll think oh it's fragile don't touch it but i've never had a problem at all of any of the model kits i have breaking okay i did break that during the process but i was trying to take it back apart and it had snapped in there that's my own fault but from regular wear tear acba you shouldn't have a problem with model kit now it's weird to say this about a droid but articulation wise the neck it does turn right here and it's essentially a separate piece it just follows a trail a track around and you get full rotation out of that at the shoulders or hips or i don't know droid anatomy who cares this point right here it does rotate all the way around but when you get crazy with it it likes to work itself out so anytime you move it around you'll want to push it back in down at the ankle or wrist you get this much, this much, and you do have the travel leg, and that's what I'm going to call it from now on. But you pop the head off. You can see some of the silver, how tight it is. It's coming off this piece right here. <laughs> Just blow that away. But if you push right here, you get the travel leg. Pull that down, and that gets a little hinge on that foot too. So if you pull that here, put that there, put that there, you'll get high-speed pursuit R4. I forgot the other designated letters. R4-I9, I knew that. And that looks good too. It almost doesn't want to go flat all the way across. When you put it down, it'll kind of rock, but yeah, it's so minimal that it doesn't really matter. And then to put that away, you just make them think about baseball. <laughs> and then that joke's never been made before. You just push that up in there. It's flat, it stays up, it's good. Now looking at the body itself, they did a great job of making these panels almost seamless when you plug them in, but they are actually opening panels. You have to find your, there you go, kind of shove, push away from it. The door comes off. This one comes off also. You push in the middle, it shoves out, you pull it out. This side panel here slides out. And then this one right here, you push, it slides out. And if you look inside right there, you can see tab holes. You have separate panels with tabs sticking out the side of it. So you can take that, plug those in. This one goes right here, this one goes right here. And there's even a small one for this one right here. 
It simulates open panels. It's kind of cool. It's better than putting a hinge in there and opening and you have little tabs you got to pull. This makes it more seamless. It's a little bit more of a pain in the ass, but it looks better in the long run. And with those, he also gets little tools. He gets a claw grabby grabby and those plug into holes back there inside the panels. He's got this gold stabby stabby. He's got this electroshock dilly whopper. He's got a bone saw and he has the smooth talking rod thing. So that looks pretty good. I'll probably never have that all these tools in here at the same time ever again. In, but it's nice to have that option if I'm doing some kind of pictures or something. Putting these in, you gotta kind of get, well, that one just fell right in. And then you shove it around a little bit, try to get it straightened up. And once you get it in there, it looks really, really nice, actually. The other opening panel he has is, he, I say he, the other opening panel is back here. And that reveals a peg hole for a stand in case, I don't know, the rocket boosters from the Deluxe R2 or something or falling in the air, or you just want them floating up. I forgot to mention how much I like that the eye is a clear piece of plastic. It's an actual lens, and that just adds to the, you know, oh, it's so accurate looking. But if you're using the R2 head for the gunmetal gray R2 unit, the set also comes with the radar and the periscope and the other tools that plug it in up here. I just didn't cut those out because I'm not using that head. And then it also comes with the drink tray for the Deluxe R2 or the regular R2. If you have the old original one, this will work on that too. And it's not bad. You knew the deal. I, it was going to be a nice sculpt, it was going to look great, but it was going to need paint. We're left to our own design to fill these up with whatever liquid is served at Java's Palace. But looking closely, I don't know if that's showing up in the camera, the glass, well, the, the clear plastic, has a nice little design. It's not just straight tumblers. It has a little crackly look to it. And for that original R2 kit, it just snaps down over his legs slash arms, whatever they are. And there you go, it works out great. Comparing it to the Mafex, it's not as good, but this is factory painted. This is coming straight to you, finished, everything. You built this. You put some elbow grease into this, you need to put a little bit more if you want that final look. For comparison, here's R4 with the original model kit C-3PO and the original model kit R2-D2. Good scale, of course, because this reuses all the parts from the neck down. But if you're a figure arts person, fits right in there too. I have figure arts, the model kits, even even Black Series, all the scales on those are fairly close. Well, I say close. Here's the Black Series Stormtrooper. Yes, scale. That R2 unit Black Series has is just terrible size. It's soft. It's weird. I, yeah, we established a long, long time ago that the model kits are a better scale for your 6-inch collection when it comes to Astromex. Because here it is with the Mafex R2-D2 and the Figure Arts R2-D2. Did I say Mafex? The Mafex Figure Arts. It's all pretty close. I do like the weathering on the Mafex, though. But the Figure Arts has the cool color change feature. Oh, so sweet. It's even on the back. That's just damn amazing. Here it is with the Model Kit Boba Fett and the Model Kit Stormtrooper. Best Stormtrooper ever. And then just to give you an idea of what you can do with these model kits, you can just take one, paint it up, and then put it together, and you have a completely different R2, R4, R5, whatever you want to do with them. These were customized for me by Greedo737 on Instagram. Go check him out. His paint jobs are freaking amazing. And then, as always, here he is with Gus. <laughs> I don't know what your problem is, but I never owned a droid. Okay, maybe I did. I was blacked out for a couple years there. Come on. So at the end of the day, I, <laughs> like I say, with every model kit review, I love these things. The details are great. They seem to have improved the decals. I, I was getting into the water slides, but these are easier. Sure, they don't look as good, but for an amateur like me, it, it's appreciated. Now, I realize for the same price, we're now getting one Astromech, where before we were getting uh, R2 and R5, or R2 and BB-8. And I don't know the reason for that. They're trying to get some money built up, maybe, for future model kits. A lot of this kit is reused parts. And then with the next two droids, the two black and orange Death Star type droids, they're full-on reuse of figures that we already have. There is a little bit of extra in it with the extra parts for R2-D2, but I don't know if that's enough. That's just more crap to push onto R2-D2. I'm in it for the different droids. But with Bluefin now able to bring these into the States to online retailers, uh, to Barnes & Noble, uh, to wherever else. I, I don't even have Barnes & Noble. <laughs> I don't have any stores local, but... I'll order them online. And for the quality that you get, the just sheer joy of putting an action figure together, you get to see all the insides and stuff, you feel accomplished by the time you finish it, I, I think it's still worth the price. 
But that's me. It's a model kit. It's Star Wars. I, I was bred to like it. The droid shelf grows though, and I'm not gonna complain about that. If you like the review, comment, like, subscribe. I'm gonna catch you on the foosh.